G'day, g'day, g'day. This is Charlie and I'm coming to you with your daily dose of business inspiration. Topic number 217. I might have said it was 216 yesterday and I'm sorry, I've got my numbers all mixed up. It's 217 today. The importance of risk taking or I might change. The the title will probably change by the time I get to the end of this. Risk taking is one of those things that some people find really easy and some people really struggle with and regardless of which camp you fall into it can be a good thing or a bad thing it doesn't matter if you are a risk taker you may find that you take risks way too easily and things don't go as well as they should do and if you are adverse to taking risk that you hold off for far too long and you miss opportunities. So uh, I want to really talk about why risk-taking is important and then talk a little bit about everything in moderation, I guess. So risk-taking is actually really important for creating a culture of innovation by encouraging ourselves and our team members to take a degree of risk. I'm not going to say be massive risk takers. There's a few people that can be, it's not everyone is, but by encouraging people to take risk, we're going to foster an environment where our team members feel safe to propose and test new ideas without fear of failure. That's really important. It's really important when we're trying to be the best we can be to really delight our clients, really become as profitable as we want to be. We need to be able to step out of the box, try something different and be prepared for it to fail, but also be prepared for it to succeed. When you start getting your team members looking like this and starting to take actions that take them just out of their comfort zones and start to become a little bit risky, it is important that we recognize and celebrate those ideas and even celebrating the lessons that we've learned from unsuccessful attempts. Really, really important that we reward that behavior. Uh, It's like, hey, listen, did you see um, Gail? Gail tried to do something and it didn't work. But now we know that that doesn't work. So that's fantastic. Well done, Gail. Thank you for showing us that. Sounds silly, doesn't it? Maybe I'm hyping that up a little. But that's kind of what you've got to do. We need to be able to evaluate and manage risks. Really, really important. Uh, and and this is where it then comes back into taking taking everything in moderation. What type of risks do we take? What type of risks don't we take? Really important that we encourage and we teach not only we, not only that we learn ourselves, but we teach our team members how to conduct risk assessments, how to analyze the potential risks associated with new projects and in, innovate initiatives. <laughs> and weigh the pros and cons of them. If we aren't teaching them that, they're not going to know what type of risk they can and can't take. And if it starts to, and if things fail catastrophically, A, it's not good for us at all, but B, it's also not good for them because they're not going to be be willing to try again. Nine times out of 10, they'll go, no, we're not going to do that again. Never do that again. And then explain and show and teach how to prepare contingency plans to address potential setbacks. Make sure we've got our backup plans in place. Make sure we can make quick adjustments if needed and make sure that our team is empowered at the same time to be able to act on those things. So one example I can give you there is before launching a new product, conduct a thorough market analysis to identify potential risks and opportunities, develop a plan to address challenges like supply chain disruptions because we've not had them recently, have we, or competitor reactions and make sure that everyone on the team understands what those plans are and how they can be enacted and how they ha- how what needs to be done to get them enacted. 
and whether it's something they can do themselves or whether it's something that they need to get approval to do. By doing this, you are not only going to minimize the negative impacts, you're going to maximize the potential for success, but you're also going to be empowering your team to be willing to try things. And that to me is really important. The final one, which is one that I talk about so often in so many things, is learn from failure and adapt. We've got to learn to fail forward. I look, I hate failure. I, I hate that feeling, that pit in your stomach you get when you're like, if I do this, I might it might not work and then I'll look like an idiot. There was a time in my life that I, I didn't want to look like an idiot. I didn't want to try. I didn't want to do things that made me look foolish or an idiot or uh, or just incompetent even. And I really didn't try a lot. I can actually relate that a little bit to um, computer gaming. I don't have a great, I don't have a great hand-eye coordination. I don't have what they call a great twitch response. I'm a bit slow. <laughs> I'll see something on the screen. Go, oh, I've got to do that. Oh, what, what, oh, there it is. I've got to do that. Twitch response is a bit slow. So I'm always a little slower. I'm always a little. I'm the clumsy one in the group. I'm the one that if you're going to get shot because you're slow moving. I'll be the one that gets shot because I'm slow moving in it in our gaming group. And for a long time, I didn't try to play games. There were certain games that I wouldn't try. There were certain things I wouldn't do because I'd, I'd been beaten up verbally, emotionally about how bad I was and, oh, you're terrible. And eventually, um, I, love, I love computer games. And what I ended up doing initially was just going and playing on my own getting my own confidence up, developing my own confidence, learning the skills, learning the rotations, learning the nuances of the game, learning the nuances of my computer, learning my own response nuances. And then once I got a little bit more confident with that, I ended up getting into it with a, with a group of my friends that I trusted a little bit more than others and said, oh, listen, guys, I'm really just practicing. I, I, I know I'm going to suck and, and I know it's going to really affect you, your scores but I want to do some practice. And they were like, no, come along. It's great. And now it's like, I, I'll go into any team just about now and go, yeah, it doesn't matter. If I, if I suck, I suck. You can abuse me. That's fine. I know, I know, I know what my limitations are. It's fine. But I was failing forward every time I was failing forward. And what I did was I took myself out of certain situations and learned to fail forward. And that's what I want you guys to think about when you're talking about taking risks, when you're talking about and becoming better at things and not wanting to feel foolish or look like idiotic or look like you're incompetent. Find ways that you can learn to fail forward to develop your self-confidence so that you can then take that out into the real world. Now, honestly, for me, it's like people go, well, what do you think? I don't know. Let me try it. Charlie, that didn't work. Nope, it didn't. I now know that doesn't work. I know, well, I don't know why it didn't work at the moment, but let me go and find that out and then I'll find out what else I can do to try to make it work. I'm actually quite happy for it to, for things to fail and that's what makes me a really good troubleshooter because I look for things to break. I look for the broken things. I look for things that break so that I can then work out, okay, it's broken there. Why did it break there? What do I need to get into? How do I get that fixed? So learn from failure and adapt, really, really important. Uh, I've given you some examples on that one. I'm not going to give you any more examples. So that's the importance of risk-taking. The importance of risk-taking is that it's going to help your team innovate better. It's going to help your team work together better. It's going to help them learn their strengths and their weaknesses. It's going to help you learn your business's strengths and weaknesses. It's going to help you determine whether this is a strategy you want to uh, pursue or whether it's something that isn't in your best interest at all. Risk-taking is really important. It does need to be moderated though. You can't go all in all the time and take all the risks every day. Sometimes you need to sit back and say, not today and that's where your threat and risk and this assessment comes in you need to sit back and say yep today is not the day we're going to do that today we're going to stick to our knitting we're going to follow the process that we know works and we're going to do it this way 
Maybe later you'll set up a project to come back and have a look at that situation and try it out, but you can do it in a controlled environment. What do you guys think? What about risk-taking scares you, exhilarates you? What have I said here that you've gone, oh, I really wish you wouldn't talk like that? You have no idea what you're saying. I really, really enjoy these discussions. I enjoy the philosoph the philosophical discussions that go along with it. I enjoy the practical nature of things that come out of those discussions because that helps me grow and it helps me share more with other people as well so please leave some comments if you can uh, wherever you're listening to or watching this I will respond to them you can always come across and join our locals community ask charlieletham.locals.com and join the discussion there until then, tomorrow we're going to be talking more about visualization, topic number 218, visualization. But until then, please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you find out when I drop more content. I know things get busy. I know that you're like, I want to listen to all these podcasts and I'm just so busy and I forget to do it. If you ring the notification bell, you'll get a little notification on your on your phone to say, hey, she's next episode's up. And you can go and hit play and listen to it while you're doing the dishes, while you're going for a walk, while you're doing something in your business. Who knows, it might help. I will see you all tomorrow when we're talking about visualization. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.